All right, reading the book of Jasher, reading chapter 78, 7 through 16, just to review Exodus chapter 3. In those days, Moshe, the son of Aram, in Midian, took Zipporah, the daughter of Ruel, the Midianite, for a wife. And Zipporah walked in the ways of the daughters of Jacob. She was nothing short of the righteousness of Sarah, Rebekah, Rachel, and Leah. And Zipporah conceived and bore a son. And Moshe called his name Gershom, for he said, I was a stranger in a foreign land. But he circumcised not his foreskin at the command of Ruel, his father-in-law. And she conceived again and bore a son, but circumcised his foreskin and called his name Eleazar. For Moshe said, Because Yahweh Elohim of my fathers was my help and delivered me from the sword of Pharaoh. And Pharaoh, king of Egypt, greatly increased the labor of the children of Israel in those days, and continued to make his yoke heavier on the children of Israel. And he ordered a proclamation to be made in Egypt, saying, Give no more straw to the people to make brick with. Let them go gather themselves straw as they can find it. Also, the tail of brick, which they shall make, let them give each day, and diminish nothing from them, for they are idle in their work. Verse 14, And the children of Israel heard this, and they mourned and signed, and cried to Yahweh Elohim on account of the bitterness of their soul. And Yahweh Elohim heard the cries of the children of Israel, and saw the oppression with which the Egyptians oppressed them. And Yahweh Elohim was provoked of his people and his inheritance, and heard their voice. And he resolved to take them out of the affliction of Egypt, to give them to the land of Canaan for a possession. Chapter 79, page 162. And in those days Moses was feeding the flock of Ruel the Midianite, his father-in-law, beyond the wilderness of sin. And the stick which he took from his father-in-law was in his hand. And it came to pass one day that a kid of goat strayed from the flock. And Moses pursued it and came to the mountain of Elohim to Horeb. And when Moshe came to Horeb, Yahweh Elohim appeared to him in a bush. And he found the bush burning with fire, but the fire had no power over the bush to consume it. And Moshe was greatly astonished at this sight. Therefore the bush was not consumed, and he approached to see this mighty thing. And Yahweh Elohim called to Moses out of the fire and commanded him to go down to Egypt to Pharaoh, king of Egypt, to send the children of Israel from his service. And Yahweh Elohim said to Moshe, Go, return to Egypt, for all those men who sought your life are dead. And you shall speak to Pharaoh to send forth the children of Israel from his land. And Yahweh Elohim showed him to do signs and wonders in Egypt before the eyes of Pharaoh and the eyes of his subjects, in order that they might believe Yahweh Elohim had sent him. The Book of Shemoth, Chapter 4 But Moshe answered and said, But behold, they will not believe me, nor hearken to my voice, for they will say, Yahweh Elohim have not appeared to you. Yahweh Elohim said to him, What is that in your hand? And he said, A rod. The Most High asked Moshe, What is in your hand? What does that mean? Moses, what is in your hand? Okay, here we have the Strong's Hebrew word 3027, Yad. Outline of biblical usage. Primary definition, hand. Alpha, hand of man. Bravo, strength, power. Charlie, side, part, portion. Delta, various special technical senses. Delta 1, sign, monument. 2. Part. Fractured part. Share. 3. Time. Repetition. 4. Axle. Trees. Axle. 5. Stays. Support. For laver. 6. Tendons. And tabernacle. 7. A phallus. A hand. Meaning unsure. 8. Wrist. Okay, so what the two definitions we want to deal with is bravo, meaning strength and power, and delta 1, meaning sign or monument. Okay, when we look furthermore in the Hebrew Chaldean lexicon for more definition of hand, and what the writer and definition is trying to convey to us, the wisdom of your Elohim which is in your hand, i.e., which you possess, into your hand, i.e., into my power. Everybody see that? Okay, here's another example. The phrase, the hand of Elohim is on anyone, is also used in this sense. The spirit of Elohim is on a prophet, begins to move him, and as much as the spirit of Elohim was communicated to men with laying on hands, this may be understood because of your hand, i.e., because of the spirit of Yahweh Elohim by which I am moved. And Yahweh Elohim said to Moshe, What is that in your hand? And Moshe said, A rod, meaning whose power do you possess? 
The Most High gave Moshe powers at this point, or his spirit. Strong's Hebrew word, 4294, Metah, for rod. The outline of biblical usage, staff, branch, tribe, staff, rod, shaft, branch of vine, tribe, company led by chief with staff originally. Looking into definition two and three, especially used for the rod of a king, a scepter. Definition three, a tribe of the people only used for the tribes of Israel, the tribe of the children of Manasseh, the leaders of the tribes. So the Most High is reassuring Moshe that he is certainly be with him, bestowing on Moshe the powers of the Most High Elohim. Verse 3, And Yahweh Elohim said, Cast it on the ground. And Moshe cast it on the ground, and it became a serpent, and Moshe fled from before it. Strong's Hebrew word, 7993, Salah. Outline of biblical usage, Bravo 4, to be cast, metaphorically. Using the Brown Driver Briggs lexicon, metaphoric definition, be cast on his protection. From the Jacinius Hebrew Chaldee lexicon, metaphoric definition, I commit my affairs to you. Another example, to cast anything on Elohim, i.e. to commit to his care. Verse 3 again, and he said, cast it on the ground, and he cast it on the ground, and it became a serpent. And Moshe fled from before it. Let's understand what the serpent means now. Strong's Hebrew word, 5175, Nahash. The outline biblical usage, serpent, snake, serpent, image of serpent, fleeing serpent, mythological. So looking at the Jacinius Hebrew Chaldee lexicon, we're presented with a definition. The first definition, a serpent, so-called from its hissing, used of the constellation of the serpent or dragon in the northern part of the sky. Now the definition tells us to see the root, so let's go there. Now we're at the primary root, Strong's Hebrew word 5172, Nahash. All right, using the KJV translation, the biblical usage, and the Strong's definition. So I'm going to read what's highlighted in sequence. KJV translation count. Indeed, certainly, learned by experience, diligently observed. Outline of biblical usage. Learned by experience, diligently observed. Take as an omen. Strong's definition. Learned by experience. Indeed, diligently observed. Hebrew Chaldee lexicon. Definition 2. To augur, to forebode, to divine. I augur that Yahweh Elohim bless me for your sake. Do you not know that such a man I can certainly divine? Yo. You got the juice now, man. Verse 4. And Yahweh Elohim said to Moses, Put forth your hand, and take the serpent by the tail. And he put forth his hand, and he caught it, and it became a rod in his hand. Strong's Hebrew word, 2180, Zanav. Outline of biblical usage. Tail, in, stump. Using the Jacinius Hebrew Chaldee lexicon. Metaphorically, extremity, the end of anything. Okay, so what is the Most High trying to tell Moses? What the Most High is trying to tell Moses that I'm going to give you my power, and I'm going to be with you all the way to the end. That's why Moses was never baited in his strength. Verse 5, that they may believe that Yahweh Elohim of their fathers, the Elohim of Abraham, the Elohim of Isaac, the Elohim of Jacob, have appeared to you. Verse 6, and Yahweh Elohim said furthermore to Moshe, put now your hand into your bosom. And he put his hand into his bosom. And when he took it out, behold, his hand was leprous as snow. And Yahweh said, Put your hand to your bosom again. And Moshe put his hand into his bosom again, and plucked it out of his bosom. And behold, it turned again as his other flesh. And it shall come to pass, if they will not believe you, neither hearken to the voice of the first sign, that they will believe the voice of the latter sign. And it shall come to pass, if they will not believe also these two signs, neither hearken to your voice, that you shall take of the water of the river, and pour it on the dry land, and the water which you take up out of the river shall become blood on the dry land. The Elohim of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So all the Israelites know who this Elohim is and his promises that he made to Abraham and to Isaac and to Jacob with taking one of the smallest tribes and promising to Abraham to make him of many nations. So in like manner, we have the Most High demonstrating his signature with Moshe putting his hand into his bosom. His hand was placed into his bosom it turned leprosy, meaning to be unclean, 
or bitter. Once Moshe placed his hand back into his bosom and took it back out, his hand was made back alive. We have to remember that the Israelites were in bondage, almost synonymous with being as snow, bitter. Both these signs are the most high signature from being from dead to alive, from bitter to sweet, unclean to clean. Verse 10, and Moshe said to Yahweh Elohim, O my Elohim, I am not eloquent, neither heretofore, nor since you have spoken to your servant, but I am slow of speech and of a slow tongue. And Yahweh Elohim said to Moshe, who have made man's mouth or who make the dumb or death? or the seeing, or the blind, have not I, Yahweh Elohim? Now therefore go, and I will be with your mouth, and teach you what to say. And Moshe said, O my Elohim, sin, I pray you, by your hand of him who you will send. Reading chapter 70 in the book of Jashir. In the third year of the birth of Moses, Pharaoh was sitting at a banquet, when Apparanath, the queen, was sitting at his right hand, and Bathia at his left. And the lad Moses was laying on her bosom, and bailing the son of Beor, with his two sons. And all the princes of the kingdom were sitting at the table in the king's presence. And the lad stretched forth his hand on the king's head, and took the crown from the king's head, and placed it on his own head. And when the king and the princes saw the work of which the boy had done, the king and the princes were terrified, and one man to his neighbor expressed astonishment. And the king said to the princes who were before him at the table, What speak you, and what say you, O princes, in this matter? And what is to be the judgment against the boy on account of this act? And Balaam, the son of Beor, the magician, answered before the king and the princes, and he said, Remember, O my lord and king, the dream which you did dream many days since, that which your servant interpreted to you. Now, therefore, this is a child from the Hebrew children, in whom the spirit of Elohim, and not let my lord the king imagine that this youngster did the thing without knowledge. For he is a Hebrew boy, and wisdom and understanding are with him, although he is yet a child, and with wisdom he has done this thing, and chosen to himself the kingdom of Egypt. For this is the matter of all the Hebrews, to deceive kings and their nobles, to do all things cunningly, in order to make the kings of the earth and their men tremble. Surely you knoweth that Abraham their father acted thus, who deceived the army of Nimrod king of Babylon, and Abimelech king of Gerar, and that he possesses himself over the land of the children of Heth, and all the kingdoms of Canaan, and that he descended into Egypt, and said of Sarah his wife, she is my sister, in order to mislead Egypt and their king. His son Isaac also did so when he went into Gerar and dwelt there, and his strength prevailed over the army of Abimelech, king of the Philistines. He also thought of making the kingdom of the Philistines stumble, and saying that Rebekah, his wife, was his sister. Jacob also dealt treacherously with his brother, and took from his hand his birthright and his blessing. He went then to Padam Aram, to the house of Laban, his brother's mother, and cunningly obtained from him his daughter, his cattle, and all belonging to him, and fled away and returned to the land of Canaan to his father. His sons sold their brother Joseph, who went down into Egypt and became a slave, and was placed in a prison house for twelve years, till the former Pharaoh dreamed dreams, and withdrew him from the prison house, and magnified him above all the princes in Egypt, on account of his interpreting his dreams to him. And when Elohim caused a famine throughout the land, he sent for and brought his father and all his brothers and the whole of his father's household and supported them without price or reward and bought the Egyptians for slaves. Now therefore, my lord king, behold, this child has risen up in their stead in Egypt, do according to their deeds and to trifle with every king, prince and judge. If it please the king, let us now spill his blood on the ground, lest he grow up and take away the government from your hand and the hope of Egypt perish after he shall have reign. Balaam said to the king, Let us moreover call for all the judges of Egypt and the wise men thereof, and let us know if the judgment of death is due to this boy, as you did say, and then we will slay him. And Pharaoh sent and called for all the wise men of Egypt, and they came before the king. And the angel of Yahweh Elohim came among them, and he was like one of the wise men of Egypt. And the king said to the wise men, Surely you have heard what this Hebrew boy who is in the house has done. And thus has Balaam judged in the matter. Now judge you also, and see what is due to the boy for the act he has committed. And the angel, who seemed like one of the wise men of Pharaoh, answered and said as follows, before all the wise men of Egypt, and before the king and the princes, If it please the king, let the king send for men who shall bring before him an onyx stone and a coal of fire, and place them before the child, 
and that the child shall stretch forth his hand and take the onyx stone, then shall we know that with wisdom has the youth done all that he has done, and we must slay him. But if he stretch forth his hand on the coal, then shall we know that it was not with the knowledge that he did this thing, and he shall live. And the thing seemed good in the eyes of the king and the princes. So the king did according to the word of the angel of Yahweh Elohim. And the king ordered the onyx stones and the coal to be brought and placed before Moshe. And they placed the boy before them. And the lad endeavored to stretch forth his hand to the onyx stone. But the angel of Yahweh Elohim took his hand and placed it on the coal. And the coal became extinguished in his hand. And he lifted it up and put it into his mouth and burnt part of his lip and part of his tongue. And he became heavy in the mouth and tongue.